Welcome to the Adam Rothstein Hockey Podcast. This is your podcast for all things hockey. On this podcast, we talk about past history to the modern day and what you can do to grow the sport. I am your host, Adam Rothstein. All right, let's get to the show. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. It is another audio episode. So today we are talking about goalie goals and the most recent one from Linus Olmark. And and I have to say uh, his goal was a beauty. It was like perfectly shot uh, down the ice. You know, he stepped out a little to his right and then he just took a very, um, a, a very long shot. Uh, the puck was propelled nice and high, and it just floated down into the empty net. And uh, it was really a thing of beauty, uh, I have to say. Uh, so uh, goalie goals. Um, if I've uh, talked about this before. Um, Billy Smith was the first one to do it, even though he didn't shoot it in. It just, uh, was off of his stick, but apparently a, an opposing player, uh, banged it into the, to their net accidentally after missing a pass. That's, uh, that's like checkmating yourself in a, in a way. Uh, so the Islanders apparently won that game. Uh, also... Uh, uh, Marty Brodeur, I think, is the only one that has two goalie goals. Uh, and, and there have been, and uh, Pecorine was uh, the one before him as well. You also, um, and, and then you have uh, a goalie by the name of Ron Hextall, who did not make it into the Hall of Fame, but had a goalie goal. And and I do want to just say that um, uh, when... When I'm putting, if I ever do get the opportunity to decide who gets into the Hall of Fame, that's not going to be the end-all, be-all. Their save percentage and their GAA is going to be my primary concern uh, for goalies on who gets in and who doesn't get in. So even if uh, that has that goalie has a goal um, uh, in their career, I'll still probably decide uh, on the no for that, if if the GAA is like um, really low, like like in the eight hundreds, uh, low, uh, I'd I'd still probably say no. Uh, certainly in this era of butterfly goalies, uh, yeah. So um, when it comes to uh, goalie goals, um, I've I you don't see them too much these days. Now um, I've seen. Goals from defensemen where they're like 180 feet away from the goal and then it just has a weird bounce. They take a slap shot or they take a hard wrist shot um, all the way from their zone, their defensive zone, and then they just shoot it across the ice and the goalie just um, either slips a little too far to his left or to his right and then, and then it just somehow winds up in the back of the net. And and uh, Ray Bork, if uh, you go to my Substack stack um, and, uh, and go through all the uh, other pieces, uh, that video is for free. And uh, you will see that um, in part of that video, he took a shot and, uh, and it just wound up in the back of the net. He just decided, oh, I'm going to take this shot and... and uh, and just put it on net because the goalie won't be expecting it, and uh, it'll be in the back of the net. And so it was. And, and that uh, just tells you how powerful Ray Bork's shot was, from about 160 feet away from the goal, too. I mean, that's like hitting a 500-foot home run in baseball, almost, uh, so to speak. But, but there, like, we we don't. But to. To come back to my main point, we don't see that much, and and 
And the reason for it is because one, the goalie needs to be in proper positioning and the goalie needs to be willing to take that risk as well and not just give it to his defenseman or her defenseman at all. And, uh, and what you need to do as well is you need to make sure the goalie has a lane to get a shot off as well. And, and if, there's an, if there's a four checker coming to get that puck, you know, it could, it could also go downhill because the four checker could get, could steal it from the goalie and have an empty net uh, or open net chance, and uh, it's in the back of the net, and that could be uh, more costly. So oftentimes, the risk is not worth it for the goalie to step out and take a shot on net. And also, uh, the reason why we're not seeing many goalie goals, at least in the NHL, is because the goalie needs to step out and make sure the shot is accurate as well. So you need accuracy and you need at least a lane and some space between the players. Um, also, let's see. Um, also, it's a, it's a very different stick. It is a very different stick from all the other players' sticks. It's uh, the curve itself or the blade itself is a little larger. Is a lot. Uh, is, it's about um, 50% larger than the traditional uh, stick for the defensemen and uh, the wingers and the centermen. It uh, so also the um, it's built differently. The the shaft is not the same, and and you're shooting with your right hand on top if you're a righty and or your left hand on top if you're a lefty and you're using your glove as well in the motion. So it's not a natural swing as well the way if you're a right-handed uh, shot, you're not going to have that same uh, thing as well. So getting that as high as he did and as accurate as he did was um, is a very rare moment, and and I bet and and I bet like every listener on this could could probably not do it uh, in the, because one you're wearing so many pads and you have to shoot awkwardly with an awkward stick and and it's not gonna it's not easy at all and and I tried using a goalie stick and I'm thinking like. How am I, like, like, it's good for blocking, but, like, it's not designed to shoot. So to do it with that type of stick is always impressive, no matter who you are. I've seen this, um, I have not seen it in high school. I don't remember any shot from a goalie in high school as well. Because they're, because remember, their primary concern is to keep the puck out of the net. Never saw it in high school, I think. I saw it once in the AHL. I mean, it's certainly happened in high schools, and it, and maybe it's happened in Pee Wee or whenever it's um, the rules allow for the goalie to um, be pulled. It, it's happened there. It's happened in the AHL. It's happened in the AHL. It's happened in juniors, I know. And I think it happened one time at... at Towson in the ACHA, and that's the American College Hockey Association, and uh, as well NCAA. It's it certainly happened there as well, but but I do think that it's always a significant uh, portion of history when it does happen. Um, before. Uh, the late 70s and early 80s before uh, Billy Smith. I don't... Th- we didn't see this in the NHL, at least. And and uh, documenting this as well like as to who had that was very... was not easy to account for. The... I mean, it probably happened in peewees in high school and midgets and... Uh, whatever the junior league was at the time, and maybe even the AHL 
um, or the CHL as well. But it never happened in the NHL, and 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 the situation was just not there for one thing. Uh, it's not like there wasn't any attempts. It just there was not the era was not there for goalies to score, and also they were playing with wooden sticks. So having an awkward stick, an awkward shot, and a less powerful stick would would have been much harder to get it in, too. There, um, also, remember, here's another reason why uh, it's very hard for goalies to score. Guess what? The defense is still out, and, and it's technically a six-on-five just because uh, their goalie is pulled. So guess what? That's an extra player the goalie needs to get the puck around, too. So that's why we, we haven't seen it. Six-on-five... Uh, with an empty net is still hard, and they will take that risk every time when they're down by a goal. But when your goalie seals the deal with 47 seconds left, um, it it always is. If anything, that's just like a relief. It's a sigh of relief for uh, that team uh, because yeah, it's they're up by two and. And it's much harder. And when you have uh, less than fifty seconds left on the clock, you can you can put your your top guys out there and just uh, and then just focus on defense, and you're good. It's that simple. Uh, for the most part, as long as they don't turn it over, turn the puck over. Um, I think if you're a goalie, um, I mean, yeah, definitely practice. You know. Practice that. Take your uh, your ice shots uh, from the distance. I've done that before, and it's gone in the net. But it's easy for me because I don't. I'm not a goalie. I've got a regular stick. I'm a forward, and and that's probably the simplest reason why uh, you know you know why it's so much easier for a defenseman to take a shot and have that in the back of the net, even with the goalie in there as well. Um, we've, we've never seen a goalie uh, score on... Uh, it, only empty netters have we seen in the NHL, at least. At least in the NHL, as far... Uh, that's the only one I really know, because, I mean, it, it could have happened in a Pee Wee game that I don't know, or a Mites game that I don't know about, but... If a goalie does, if a goalie did get that opportunity, and uh, the defense um, or and the four checkers are just so far away, and the puck is there, and he for whatever reason doesn't want the icing, and he takes a shot or something like, and is that risky? Uh, that is um, definite. That is it could go wrong a million ways. So. I don't think we'll even see a uh, goalie take that risk. And if a goalie ever did take that risk, uh, you know that goal is getting benched in the NHL. Certainly in the NHL. And probably even down to high school, if not even to uh, middle school. Um, Assuming there's two goalies in middle school. But certainly down to high school, that is... Like, that is a no, 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 no. You are not doing that, son. Uh, that, that's not... It, it would not work out for, for a multitude of reasons in that sense. Uh, now, goalie goals are very rare. I still think... Uh, I don't know if... Even with expansion, it, st- it still is incredibly rare and you'd think because more games more opportunities but even in the past three years we've only seen two just two times out of the multiply 82 uh times uh not even necessarily 32 um but you'd have to do okay 82 times 31 um teams then multiply that by two, and then you're going to add whatever 32 times 82 is, uh, multiply that by one, and then just add those numbers together, and uh, you should see, 
and that and that's a lot of games. That's like uh, I'm actually gonna actually now I'm gonna do that real quickly and just tell you that uh, as well. Okay, so we have 31 teams from 2019 to uh, that season, or or yeah, you know what? I'll just do that. Multiply that by three. Um, times 82, 7,626, uh, plus, or, uh, yeah, 7,626, and then we've got 82 times two seasons equals that, times 32, uh, yeah, so 5,248. So you have over 11,000 games, and yet, and yet I know it's crazy. It doesn't happen that often. But out of all of those games, you know, goalies will not be in that situation because oftentimes the goalies are down as, as well, and sometimes they're tied. So oftentimes they're not even going to be put into that situation. So over 50% of the time, the goalie's not going to be, have his team ahead, or most goalies will not have their team ahead. One, because they're either tied or they're losing. And if they are ahead, um, they still have to focus on protecting the net. And most oftentimes, uh, a forward or a defenseman is going to take that shot, not the goalie. So, uh, so just uh, be be mindful of that uh as well and and that's 11,000 games as well that's 11,000 uh 60 minute games sometimes there's overtime as well and and I've never seen that well and and I've and certainly when that goes to overtime the goalie is not going to be in such a situation uh at least not in this era of the overtime as well so that so so there's less than maybe you're going to see a thousand situations uh over the course of the next 3 years and uh and maybe if they update the uh, OT rule go back to 5 on 5 and then have like something like 10 minutes and then there's like a penalty or something and they want to pull something at some point it it, it would be the rarest thing ever if that happened in overtime. It'd be the rarest thing if that happened in the first or second period, but it always occurs in the... But I think aside from the Billy Smith one, everything everything occurred in the third period. Everything else occurred in the third period uh, at, with like less than two minutes to play for the most part. And, uh, and I've seen... And I've seen weird things happen over the years, but... But it's always fun to see a nice goalie goal. All right, um, a little bit of a shorter episode today, and I apologize for no video. But if you like this podcast, head over to rothsteina.substack.com. That's R-O-T-H-S-T-E-I-N-A dot substack dot com. Uh, from there, uh, if you sign up as a premium member for five dollars a month, you get access to the bonus episodes. You get access to the written content as well, both paid and unpaid as well. And if you uh, don't want to pay for the premium, you can also sign up for free uh, as well and just enter your email, select the free option, and you get access to the free content as well. So uh, thank you very much for listening and take care.